watching Count Films TV. All right, guys, we got Kai here. Kai, can you move your water bottle just a little over there on the floor? Thank you so much. Okay, Mike, please start us off with Kai. Hey, Kai, I'm so glad you made about the, uh, you know, the five years in your gym and all that you have all been able to accomplish as the team. Um, but specifically, it, it feels like a lot of times as a commodity that they become better people, men and women. What would you say uh, about your coaches and the impact they've had on you, not only as a fighter, but as a man outside of the cage, and how that helps prepare you for a 2024 PFL season? Um, yeah, it's big. I, I think my coaches, my set of coaches, they care about me. Once I leave the gym, they're still checking on me. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we have great relationships there. Um, and, and they and they truly care about us. I mean, I'm sure all coaches do it all over the place, but my coaches, you know, they truly care about care about me, um, my family, my kids, and um, yeah, we have a good relationship. We're here all week together, um, and we've we've just built a good rapport with each other. And then coming into this fight, obviously uh, business has been booming and took off the first two weeks in the PFL. A lot of finishes over the first couple of weeks. I know that's what a lot of fighters are looking for, especially coming into the PFL season for the first time. Is that what you're looking for specifically? As a couple of fighters earlier, they said, you know, more importantly, it's the win. But are you looking to get those extra points for an early finish? I'm, act I'm looking to get um, all my money. The win, the, the 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 finish comes, the finish will come. You know, once I start picking him apart, touching up his nose, um, making him panic wrestle. I appreciate it, Kai. Thank you. Zane. Hey, Kai. It's nice to be able to speak to you again. Just a quick question for a few days after your fight. Obviously, uh, how. What was the rest of training camp going? And how do you expect to, to the fight with uh, James uh, to on Friday from your perspective? Um, the rest of the training camp went well. I feel like um, I feel like I did everything that I needed to to prepare. Um, now it's time to just um, get the job done. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like um, I have all the tools, uh, resources in Vegas in my team. Um, and, and, and I'm fully locked in. So, I mean, I, I feel like this fight, you know, as, as if I just do what I got to do, if I, I mean, yeah, if I just stick to the game plan or just if I stay, stay sharp, um, it should look easy. Thanks. Good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. All right, Pierce. What's up, Kai? How are you doing, my man? Doing good, doing good. So, so Hawaii MMA has been very hot right now. Uh, how does it feel to maybe keep the momentum going? And also, how's the support back home in Hawaii? Um, yeah, the, I mean, the momentum is um, really strong, especially after, um, you know, this past weekend, UFC 300. Uh, with, with Max, you know, you you ask anybody, anybody, I'm I'm at the spa or any place, walk in the streets, and they know that I'm I'm a um, I'm a fighter from Hawaii, they or just a fighter in general. They ask if I watch the UFC 300, and I tell them yeah, and he goes, oh, what did you see that Holloway fight? You know, it was that that was the fight on top of a great card, on top of a great card. That was the fight that stood out to everybody, you know, because of what what it displayed, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to tag along to that. Um, me and Max have a great relationship. Um, and yeah, we, we, you know, we, we talk pretty often. I, um, I, I get little information from him on pointers and stuff on, on whatever I can from that, that kind of guy. Um, you only can aspire to be somebody like him. And I feel like other than him, you know, or anybody, 
uh, from Hawaii coming up. I'm the youngest one right now, still doing it from a young kid age. So, I mean, it, it, it makes me proud um, from that point of view to be following in his footsteps, not in the same path, but, you know, um, striving and keep keep improving, keep making adjustments and um, showing showing the the martial arts journey, you know. Well, that's great to hear. And then also, I know Ray Seppel spent some time down in the Spirit Report. Talk to me about uh, the relationship with Ray and how he has helped you prepare mentally for this heavy work that you're going to have in the future. Uh, yeah, me and Ray have a great relationship. Uh, he was he was actually one of my coaches for a little bit when I when I was in the UFC uh, when I first moved to Vegas. So I mean, we we have a great relationship. Um, you always gotta take any information that you can from a guy like that, um, whether it's inside the cage or um, at home, dealing with fight fight life. And yeah, Ray Sevo has been a um, good asset to somebody like me in my life. Just you know, having him as a resource to to reach out, even from a Polynesian standpoint. You know, a trap going away from home, um, training and. Um, yeah, fighting at the highest level. He's a six-time world champion. And then uh, one last question in regards to your matchup. So with Bubba, he's been around the PFL for a while. I don't think it's really going to be a surprise what he's going to look to do in the octagon. Um, how do you view this matchup? And do you view it as like if he can stop the takedown, do you think you're going to really challenge him? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I pre I've been preparing for this kind of style for forever. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I may have not wrestled to the level of, of Bubba Jenkins, but I, I'm, I'm a wrestler. Um, so I know what it's like to have, have that kind of style. Um, and um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I, I've prepared for, I prepared for guys of this kind of style. Um, two fights ago, I was preparing for Ahmed Magomedov. Um, I mean, I'm in the gym, I'm always preparing for this kind of style. Because um, to stop somebody like me with my athleticism, you got to try and hold me and kill clock. And that's just what he's going to do. So, I mean, I got I to gotta not let that happen. You know, he, he's good at what he uh, does for a reason. And I got I to gotta stop it. Appreciate it, bro. Can't wait to see you show up, buddy. Thank you. <coughs> Mills. What's up, Kai? It's in the main locker room, part of Pub Sports Radio. How are you feeling today? Feeling good, feeling good. Good, good, good. I was able to speak to you at your uh, last Bellator event, uh, Life at the Event. We talked about Jeremy Kennedy getting that uh, title shot. He was able to get that one. Uh, now let's let's talk about your fight against Bubba Jenkins. He came out and said he's going to be looking to kind of get those extra points, so he's going to be looking for the finish. You yourself, you have one win by KO, one by submission. With the points being avoided in this system, does that make your training changed up a little bit different? No. Um, I mean, my my. I mean, if you look at that, if you're looking at statistics on that kind of finishes and whatnot, I don't really look. I don't really look into that too much on percentages on, on how much finishes I have and this and that, on on how I, how it can translate to points. Uh, just because for me, as a as I. I grew, I mean, I got to the UFC like at, at a rapid spot at like seven and two. So I mean, and then, so my career moved pretty fast to where I didn't get like, I didn't get like hand-me-downs uh, right away, you know, and get groomed, you know, in a lot, in like a lot of guys that, that can build their record. I was always chasing, chasing equal matchups from the beginning. So I mean, you, when you went, and I'm constantly improving. I'm constantly improving. So I mean, if you look at those kind of things, I mean, hey, go for it. But uh, I'm I'm constantly improving to where I'm not like I feel like finishes and those kind of um, spectacle moments are gonna come even more so now because of my skill set that I've built. Um, I wasn't prepared, uh, or I, my or I just wasn't as good. So, but I was winning, you know. So. Now I I'm I mean uh, I I keep getting better I keep building off of what I what what I bring to to um, to fighting to martial arts now with the the coaches that I have um, they're you know they're they're utilizing me in a, in they're making me utilize all my skills so um, I mean whatever one one submission one KO that I mean that doesn't matter to me I'm rapidly getting better. Got it. 
fight. And one other thing I want to speak about, uh, yeah, you fought with UFC, fought for Bellator, now with PFL. But it seems like some promotions, you have to be like one of the top five fighters to get that promotion in spotlight. But it seems like PFL, they're promoting all their fighters on social media sites. And, you know, um, it seems like they're getting a lot more notoriety. Um, have you noticed anything different uh, with PFL, the way that they're promoting their fights and their fighters compared to the other organizations that you fought for prior? Um, I mean, it's kind of different. The, the, the PFL is just different from the other promotions. Um, I mean, we have a sm way smaller pool of fighters that, that they, ha they have on a card. So, I mean, that's shuffling in and out of these cards. You're going to see this next set of guys on the next card, um, you know, bearing no injury and whatnot. So, I mean, they have like the, they, they don't have to worry about who's coming in and who's leaving as much. So I mean, you got ten guys in a weight class. So I mean, you, I mean, of course you gotta, you you have the storylines to build already, um, rather than like, um, yeah, the the layout is already built. You win, you move on. So I mean, the format is different. So promoting is gonna be different. Marketing gonna be different. All right. Good luck this Friday. Thank you, Jacob. Hey, I hope you're enjoying Chicago so far. Um, as you mentioned, you are one of the younger fighters on the roster for the featherweight division, and drawing Bubba in the first matchup is probably one of the tougher matchups that you can try to get. But what would a win here do for you, and also kind of send as a message to the rest of the fighters in this featherweight division? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really care about the like the message that I would send to like other fighters, um, but I feel like I'm his for like one of his toughest matchups that he could be facing in in, in his first fight of of the season that's that's just my opinion i mean if i look at the first fights of his other seasons the um, he was probably given those on purpose and um so i mean i'm probably his toughest matchup that he's going to get to open a season so um so i mean if it just sends a message to every anybody else i mean that's cool but my main thing is to beat bubba jenkins All right, uh, Carlos. Yes, Kai. You talked about Kuro Hano back in Hawaii and uh, great place. And I, I know I love being in Hawaii. And my time over there was spent really well. Um, but your whole career, you've been through so many different companies and uh, probably had so many moments in, uh, that you remember. But what's one? that you're going to remember, you know, up to now? Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, there's so many different moments. Every fight means more to me than the last, like, than the last one. Um, my last win was pretty big, you know, fighting somebody like Henry Corrales. Um, and, you know, somebody that you just, just a, it's a name. And um, can, it, it can, he can be a scary name to a lot of guys. Um, but I feel like the mom, um, no disrespect to like any promotion, but like my, um, my, the coolest moment that I've got like in, in this sport was like, um, when I got the call for the UFC, um, you know, I moved to Vegas in hopes of, of, you know, getting, getting a call. And when you get that call, it's just like your draft day call. You know, you, it's like, and when you grow up as a kid trying to play for the NFL or wherever it is, um, you only can dream what I call. And even though it might seem close, um, you know, you when you get it, it's just, uh, it, it's like like no other feeling. Facts, facts, I bet. And, uh, you know, what can we all expect, you know, in Chi-Town Friday at 2 from uh, the great? Excuse me? Oh, what can we all expect, you know, from, you know, your performance in Chicago um, you can expect a tactical, um, technical, smart, focused, um, sharp, Kai Kamaka. I mean, uh, I mean, Bubba Jenkins is as good as he is for a reason. He, he can wrestle, um, but there's a reason why this matchup was made, you know, um, and I feel like 
and I'm I'm one of the guys, you know, to to beat him to with, with my style to to beat him. People think I'm just a striker, um, because they've seen like my past couple fights, but um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean this is MMA, this is not wrestling. Thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate you and uh, much respect to your Ohana. Thank you. All right, Kai, that's all we got for today. Thank you so much. We're just going to go right next door to live media. Thanks again. All right, guys, I'm going to go get Umalatov. You're next to me. Uh, there is a chance he wants to do it himself. There's some good players that have. Uh, I don't know. Take a look at his shooter. He's got no. 